Ethereum is in hot water at the moment within the community with some concerns about how centralized the staked Ether is becoming. The issue in question is pretty well summarized with this little pie chart we have here. And the question comes at why does one party called Lido is controlling 32% of the total staked ETH in the market? The issue with this is that it's getting dangerously close to 33%, which effectively controls one third of all of the staked ETH in the network. Some background context for those of you who don't already know, Ethereum moved from a proof of work consensus mechanism sometime late last year in September, which moved across in what was called the merge from proof of work to a proof of stake consensus mechanism. What this allowed you to do was become a validator in the Ethereum proof of stake protocol. To do so, you just need to stake 32 ETH upfront and kind of run three different pieces of software. In a nutshell, just to skim over it, essentially, if you are a good validator, you get rewards. If you're a bad validator, you lose some of the ETH that you put up upfront. As you can imagine though, not everyone has 50,000 USD that they're willing to put upfront to earn around a three to 5% return annually. What this led to was things called liquid staking pools, where essentially you give someone else your ETH, let's say I gave them one ETH or 0.1 ETH, they bundle it up into batches of 32 and distribute it to their set of validators that are participating in this kind of shared protocol. This way you can essentially stake your ETH without having that hard limit of requiring 32 upfront, which is quite a lot for most individuals to receive the annual staking fee that you would expect from being able to stake your ETH and actually get to participate inside of the network. In return for kind of facilitating this for you, they protocol such as Lido takes a fee, in this case, a 10% fee of the rewards that you would typically receive if you were running a validator yourself. As you can imagine, this is pretty enticing for some users who don't have the upfront 32 ETH or don't wanna take on the risk of being a solo staker and having some of the ETH slashed in case of some downtime or just inexperience in running or being a validator. So over time, Lido has reached around a 32% of total staked, including all of the solo stakers and other pools and protocols participating in this kind of shared staking systems. The DAO governing Lido actually voted on whether or not they should self limit to remain below 33%. And the answer was pretty much a resounding no with 99.81% of the votes going towards no. And this kind of makes sense for Lido because the more money that goes into their protocol, the more of that 10% fee that they get for the validated rewards. The thing that's interesting about this though, is you can see here, there's 80 million tokens that were voted for the no. And if you dive into the actual votes, you can see 20 million, a quarter of that no vote came from one wallet, 18 million came from another, 8 million, 6 million, 5 million, 5 million. Essentially, a lot of the 80 million that voted for no came from these top 10, 20 wallets that were actually voting, which isn't necessarily, at least in my opinion, reflective of what the broader community actually desires. What are the implications for Ethereum if one party such as Lido controls over one third of the total staked Ethereum? To answer this, we can reflect on the Ethereum documentation using this term called supermajority. And supermajority refers to the requirement for over two thirds of the network to kind of agree on the finalization of a block. So over two thirds of the network has to say, yep, that block looks good before that block gets finalized. What this means is if Lido somehow uses social pressure to manipulate or enable all of the validators participating in the protocol to work together in a kind of collusion, they could effectively stop the chain or delay the finality, at least for a period of time on Ethereum as a whole. An important caveat to this is within the proof of stake protocol, there's what's called an inactivity leak built in to prevent this kind of thing from happening. The way this works is Ethereum says, hey, we haven't produced or finalized a block in some time. What's happening? Why aren't over one third of the network producing these finalized blocks? It then takes a look at which validators are not properly participating in this network and preventing the chain from finalizing blocks and starts slashing away the ETH that they actually stake, which means the financial incentive for Lido or the validators participating in Lido 
are not really there. They would be the ones losing the money of the people who stake through the protocol, which would effectively kill Lido and stop people from staking in Lido as they lose the trust in the protocol. Over time, as the slashing gets more and more severe, the staked would be cut so much that Lido and the validators doing this collusion would actually lose that much ETH that they no longer control over 33% and the chain would continue as usual. So while the 33% or one third of the network does sound scary, there are built-in mechanisms to prevent and continue the chain if this thing were ever to kind of occur. The other thing is it actually requires major social pressure of Lido to say to all of the validators that participate, hey, let's collude together and let's all lose money together and lose trust and essentially destroy our own business, which doesn't really make sense for anyone involved. This does start to get concerning when you reach 50% and 66% of the total staked ETH, but maybe that's a video for another time. Hopefully we never have to make that one. If you wanna go even deeper into this, shout out to Saigar's thread will be linked in the description, which also references Mike's article, which is called Magnitude and Direction of Lido Attack Vectors, which again will be linked in the description, goes much more in depth into the possible attacks that could result of this situation. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Remember to like the video if you liked it, subscribe to see more like this, and I'll see you in the next one.